Holy, that's how you start? She's devastated. But that of me. They killed their son. Single mother is inconsolable. The Bronx woman is now mourning the loss of her 16-year-old son, Ramon Gil Medrano. Before 16-year-old drill rapper Rajis would die as a result of a shooting in the back of an Uber. He was born Ramon Gil Mirando on September 7, 2004 in the Bronx to a family of Puerto Rican descent. When asked by the New York Daily News to describe the kind of childhood that Ramon lived, his sister would reveal he was just a kid who loved hanging out with his friends and playing video games and just looking forward to life. He was looking forward to getting a car, to learning how to drive, to graduating high school. But growing up in one of the most dangerous boroughs of New York City led to Ra forming links with the local street gangs known as the 800 YGs, and this association would get him into a lot of hot water with the police, including three arrests over the span of 90 days prior to his death. More than just that, he found himself in life and death situations, including in July of 2020, when he was shot for the first time at the intersection of Prospect Avenue and Oakland Place in Cretona. This attack would prove to be eerily similar to the one that would eventually claim his life and left him in critical condition. While Ra would ultimately survive this initial assault, police would never discover who perpetrated the attack and nobody was ever arrested for what happened. According to police, it didn't help matters that Ra refused to assist investigators in uncovering who assaulted him as he recovered from his wounds. Ra was hospitalized for two weeks with a deep flesh wound to the back before then finally being nursed back to health by his family at home, including his mother, as well as his sister and brother. His sister would later detail his recovery to the New York Daily News by telling them his recovery process wasn't easy. It was very painful for him and it was very painful for us to watch. It was a miracle he wasn't paralyzed. According to his mother, this new lease on life left Rob with a fresh perspective and after recovering from his injuries, he decided to turn his life around by launching a career in music. Working with a few of his closest friends, Ra took the first few steps towards a music career in the early days of summer 2021. That's when he dropped collaborative efforts like BTB alongside ESGs, Nasty Flocks, and Assassin. Unfortunately, by the time the music video to his track popped up on YouTube, Ra had less than a month left to live. He just didn't know it yet. That's a f***ed way to say that. During his triumphant final period of life, Ra would step into the booth a few more times to record yet another song with Nasty Flocks and Assassin this one titled Real Facts. But Rajis wouldn't be around to see it released as the music video dropped a little over a month after his passing. Since then, we haven't heard a single post-humanist release, which means that Ra must have not had all that much material banked in the vaults. Instead, the last thing we'll remember him for is the violent events that unfolded on July 11, 2021. That night, around 11.30 p.m., Rajis was waiting at the corner of 178th and Valentine Avenue outside his home for an Uber to arrive. When he finally did, he climbed into the back seat, moments later was shot to death with gunshot wounds to his head and chest by two individuals who then fled the scene on scooters. The investigation into what happened would take local authorities a week to piece together, and they ultimately came to believe that Ra's death was a retaliation for the murder of 13-year-old Jorian Elliott, who was shot and killed only hours earlier outside a cafe in Belmont at around 3.30 p.m. in what has been described as an unstoppable cycle of revenge and retribution that's been tearing up the Bronx. In fact, crime stats from around that time suggest that gun arrests in the city were up more than 99% during the months that these incidents took place. Medrano is one of four teenagers who were shot in four separate shootings citywide on Sunday. A 16-year-old in Brooklyn survived getting shot in the thigh near Pitkin Avenue, but the other three died. A teenager in Queens when he was shot just minutes after midnight on Quincer Road and Jaron Elliott in the Belmont section of the Bronx on East 187th Street. A memorial is now outside the 13-year-old's apartment building. Cell phone footage taken only hours after Elliot's death would reveal that Ra and some of his affiliates destroying a memorial that had been set up in his honor. Ra himself can even be heard taunting Elliot's friends, saying things like, where you at? Inside his building tonight, candles glow in the shape of his initials, J.E. It's really, really messed up, you know? Uh, these young kids out here with these gang-related things. Uh, it's just... Breaks hearts, man. I just send my love to their family. About a week after Ra's own death, two teenagers were arrested and brought up on charges in retaliation to his killing. 19-year-old Makai Williams, who is believed to be a member of the Third Side Gang, as well as an unnamed 15-year-old. Makai's charges range from second-degree murder to first-degree gang assault, conspiracy, criminal possession of a weapon, and reckless endangerment. Meanwhile, the 15-year-old was charged with second-degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon. 
Both suspects have prior arrest histories and ties to gang activity in the city, a senior NYPD officer would tell NBC New York. Ra's mother would provide context to what happened by speaking with the Daily News and telling them that he was on his way to a friend's house to record music at the time of the attack. She strongly believed that the attempt on his life a year earlier had turned his life around and set her son on a more positive path. Right up until he was killed, she explained it was really bad for him last time. He was able to surpass that. He never went back to being the same person. He loved music and he was making a disc because he wanted to be able to sell his music, become famous, and make some money. Making matters even more tragic, both Ra's mother and sister were home at the time of the killing and heard the gunshots that ended his life. Despite having heard the attack unfold, Ra's family wouldn't know what happened until after they received a frantic phone call from a friend of Ra's, who was on the phone with him at the time everything went down. Realizing his friend had been shot, he immediately called Ra's home number and informed his family of what happened. Ra's sister described his reaction to New York Daily News by telling them that was very horrific for him to hear on the phone, to hear his friend being killed while he was talking to him. More than two months later, another two teenage boys would be implicated in Ra's death. 19-year-old Haseeb Cuts and an identified 16-year-old boy were brought up on charges of murder, manslaughter, and gun possession. As of right now, this case is still working its way through the New York City legal system, and official sentences haven't been handed out for anybody involved leaving Ra's family with more questions than ever. In September of 2021, told the Daily News, I feel like things are going well in the sense that people are getting arrested, but we don't know about the sentences yet. And are we going to have to keep waiting to finally get a little bit more closure on the story of Rajiz, a talented young rapper with the potential for great things whose life was taken far too soon? He might be gone now, but here before they're famous, he'll never be forgotten. Rest easy, Rajiz, along with everybody else who's tragically lost their life in the vicious cycle of violence in the Bronx that refuses to come to a stop. Thank you everybody for watching today's video. Please let us know what you thought about Ra's story in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss an episode. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video. Violence just needs to stop. Get the guns off the streets. We just gotta get together, um, make the neighborhoods better. We need to take care of our children and our community and be one and stop fighting over, pe over petty stuff.